Shefty, what more can you tell us about how and why this happened while everybody was asleep last night? Well, Greeny, I think that's the key phrase right there from Shah Khan, the Jaguars owner, that he had hoped that Urban Meyer would regain the trust and respect of the organization, and he hadn't done that. And not only had he not done that, but it was going the other way to the point where there were many people stepping forward and offering more and more information about the travails and exploits of Urban Meyer that they didn't feel made him fit to serve as the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. And even though Shad Khan wanted to try to stand by Urban Meyer, ultimately, the more he listened to people and the more he stepped back and removed himself from the process, the more he understood that this was a relationship not worth saving. There were too many incidents, too much trouble, too many instances of dishonesty. And in the end, ultimately, I think Shad Khan handed it off to the lawyers to figure out because Urban Meyer has four years remaining on the contract that the Jacksonville Jaguars gave him less than one year ago. And I'm sure that the Jaguars' attorneys feel like there is cause for firing him, meaning there is a question about how much money they will have to pay him. Urban Meyer would contend, I'm sure, that the contracts of coaches are guaranteed. He's entitled to his money. And I'm sure these lawyers will be having many conversations about what is and isn't owed Urban Meyer in the days and weeks to come. Right. So there's a lack of clarity with that. But the one thing that is certain is that he's out in Jacksonville. And I just before we get to anything else, and I think there were so many pieces of this story, I just want all of the fans to be able to understand how emotionally the players <coughs> react when they hear these stories. So, so D. Wood, again, I'll start with you because I saw your tweet on it yesterday. <laughs> when you read the story about him kicking the kicker, like what immediately came to your mind? Man, I wish somebody would try <laughs> to kick me. Like, are you like? He, he are you took serious? it though, dude. He like, took it, D. Wood. He I better mean, die. the 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 disrespect from a coach to feel like I'm over you and I can do whatever I want to you. This is not college when you're dealing with you know 18, 19 year old <laughs> kids who own scholarship and who are desperate, you know, who are trying to scratch and claw their way, trying to get to the next level. You're dealing with grown men with families. Like, to think that th he thought that that would ride or he, he, he thought that that was okay, I think that's, that's, for me, of all the other stuff that's been out there by Urban Meyer, that's the one for me. That's for, interesting. For, for me, it's the one not flying back with the team. Yeah. I mean, because because that that is the ultimate sin. We yeah. just lost, and it's your job to, and your responsibility to make sure that we have the best opportunity to win. And you thought that. And then when I figure out why you didn't fly back with us, you would have been lost. Me, it's nothing you could say to me because yeah. you're talking about do as I say, not as I do. Listen, it's about accountability, and it's about being able to trust you, right? And when somebody's constantly lying about everything, whether it's the running back, whether it's mm -hmm. Doyle, and I, I, he thought he was beyond reproach. And the best coaches, the best coaches I've ever been around understood that it was a partnership, not a dictatorship. Because what happens is first they fire the player, but then they fire the coach. And a lot of players get, are able to have more job security than the coach. So understanding that it's a partnership and that our futures are linked and intertwined to each other and that we have to have each other's back in the foxhole because really about being an athlete or being in the pros is about managing failure. Right? And how we respond to it and being able to inspire. You can't inspire me when you bench one of our best players and then you say, I don't control. Come on, man, you're the biggest micromanager, biggest narcissist <laughs> I've ever been around. And you mean to tell me you didn't know that he got benched? That just shows me that he was Teflon Don, that whatever you try to throw on him, it didn't stick. And I can't trust to be around a guy like that. And he shouldn't be around not only pros, he shouldn't be around kids at all because this is the definition of a bad character guy, a low percentage decision maker. You know, and Lewis, I want to ask you about this because I think sometimes we've gotten so accustomed to you that people think of you in other ways as but as a former player. But not only are you a former NFL player, but you played in a different era. You played in an era where I think coaches coached a little differently, where they may have been a little tougher coaching, however the, the word I'm trying to phrase here. I, with that as the sort of the backdrop here, what is your perspective when you hear some of these stories about the way Urban was treating the players? But there's just a lack of respect. Okay. First and foremost, he, does, he doesn't respect players the way that they deserve to be respected. And when you do walk up to that line as far as coaching someone hard and then disrespecting them, when you toe that line, I can tell you this, you better be credible. You better be someone that they trust in terms of, you know, 
being consistent in what you say, consistent in your message, making sure that you're conducting yourself, you know, in the appropriate ways outside of the football world. And you better be having a positive impact on those individuals while you are walking up to that line between coaching them hard and then maybe being disrespectful and crossing the line. He doesn't do any of that. He didn't do any of that in, in, anyway in the, at the NFL level. And so for me, it's like this. Look, you've heard me many times, Greeny, talk about the fact that leadership really is comprised of three things. It's being credible and trustworthy. It's being competent in terms of being an expert at doing your job and then ultimately having a positive impact on those that you are leading. You tell me where Urban Meyer at the NFL level, let's, let's forget the college level. Look, Heather Dinich already laid out how the, all these things were kind of in question during his college tenure. But you tell me where he was able to corral and or demonstrate proficiency in any one of those three areas. Being credible and trustworthy, being competent when you don't even know who's playing on your football team and you're not even be able to answer questions appropriately and accurately about who's playing, who's not, who's playing time is ascending, who's decreasing, and who did he have a positive impact? Namely, and you keep saying that we haven't mentioned Trevor Lawrence, but I said this before, namely Trevor Lawrence, mm. who is really the one guy who probably has said it most eloquently in terms of, look, the, this drama just needs to end. We just need to get rid of this drama and get to the business of winning football games. He has failed in all three areas in terms of that, that, that tripod that really needs to be like mastered in terms of being a leader. He failed at all three of those. All three of them. And I'm sure it's infuriating many, many people who would have killed to be able to be given the kind of opportunity that Shad Khan gave him which was carte blanche. You can do whatever you want in this organization. I'll give you whatever you need to rebuild this organization, both in terms of resources, infrastructure, and your total autonomy over everything here. Yep. And he threw it all out the window as if to say, look, you know what? I can do whatever the hell I want, however <laughs> I want, and nobody's going to say anything to me. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And that, it's, that's it's really it's ridiculous that this Will, is happening. That's the problem. That's the, he thought he could do whatever he wanted, that there would be no consequence. He thought he could hire a college coach with a racist record to be a strength and conditioning coach. He thought he could stay in Cincinnati and not fly home with the team. He thought he could do what he wanted with James Robinson, a great running back. He thought he could do whatever he wanted at any time. And in the end, ultimately, Shad Khan said, no, you can't. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.